this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler. I want to welcome you back to my channel. Today is day 12 and 13, I believe, of the Inktober Tangles series. And we are going to do another twofer, uh, two tangles in one tile. And uh, those two tangles are Icanthus. I always called it Icanthus before, but since uh, watching the Project Pack 21, I've been calling it Icanthus. And because that was what Maria meant. And uh, Prima by Kimberly Wood CZT. And that's uh, just a really cute little flower pattern. And uh, I figured organic, organic, oh, fun. So let's put them together and see what we get. So I did do this video earlier, and this is what I came out with. And I made some discoveries by doing this. And that is, this is way too busy. <laughs> And yeah, so yeah, so we're back on a regular tile and we're going to do this a little bit differently, but I do still want to, uh oh, about to have singing. No, Simba's asleep. All right, cool. Whew. All right, so I'm going to put a border on this, just a straight one or straight ish again in my case. I've been drawn all over my hands with jelly roll today. And I need to have Mari come in here and look at the camera and see if my head is out of it because that has been a a real challenge lately for me. It's keeping my head out. All right. So what I want to do is put in uh, one or two spiral acanthus or icanthus and uh, then tuck the flowers in somewhere. And I'm not exactly sure how I want to do that. But I think, I think I will, with my pencil, draw a really large loop like this. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully you can see it without me drawing it completely wonky. All right, I think we're doing okay. And um, then I'm going to put my flowers in maybe one over here and one over here and then we'll see where we end up okay so i just put one uh a curly tail on on here all right so i'm going to probably use uh my pn plus my zero one um a lot of times when i use my zero one i don't I'm not satisfied with the lines, so I go back in over it with my PN. So, mm. so I'm going to, let's see, I want to put the flowers on top of the icanthus. And uh, so I'm going to draw them in first. And how do I want to set this? Let's do this one first, since I'm more sure what I'm going to do with it. So I am just going to make two skinny little stem lines. Second one I'm going to go slow on so I don't mess it up. When I lift my hand when I'm drawing, I, I can feel my hand going to jerk. And so I'm lifting the pen to keep that from making a mess. It's a coping mechanism. So that's what's going on. So this is what I'm going to do next is this cute little seed pod kind of ovally cute thing, okay? Then we're going to add some flux shapes. So remember flux is this teardrop shape. Try to get them the same length. <laughs> if you can do better than me, that'll be great. Well, I did not mean to do that so short, but that'll be okay. All right, so I'm going to do that that way. That's really not what I had hoped for, but there we go. That's better. And now we'll put in a shorter one for the rear end. Actually, I think I can elongate this one with the next step, which is to add a crescent of ink down on the bottom of these. Let's 
see how advantageous that was? You don't panic. Stuff stuff will always occur to you. And if it doesn't, you know, stuff happens. You got to go with it. Well, I'm going to continue this. If you can't change what's what's going on, let's not worry about it. That is a biggie for me that I have to work on every time. I like to jump to the tail end where everything's terrible and nothing is going to ever be right again. So I totally feel your pain. And okay, well, let's do this. All right. Just a partial one over there. And, I don't know, maybe a hint. Okay. And then we're going to put the little uh, flux rip version down here with the flower uh, vein lines and the little dots. That just works out so perfectly. And when you have a long one, you can fit two dots in there. You don't have to put any dots in if you don't want to. So, again, the beauty of this. So, this is going to be more towards the center, or the side. And this one... I'll do that. Okay. That's this far. Now she has some little stippling... Remember, stippling is just little dots of the pen. This can be a challenge for me. Like you can turn your pen straight up and down, so you're bringing it down square because this is a the nib on this is flat, right? The tip of it. So if you come at it from, I'll keep my head out of it. If you come at it from um, from above and just tap down then you will get a better control over it. And you won't have those little dots with the sort of uh, thing that goes off to the side, right? I, I don't know what those are. I don't know where they come from. <laughs> but they happen to me all the time. And the, the last step on this is to put some zingers around here. Not zingers. Why do I keep doing that? Fescue. And I think she likened it to ballerina hands, which is which is a good likeness. And I'm going to try to leave a little highlight in here. If not, I'll have to rescue the highlights with the jelly roll, but I prefer to do it the old-fashioned way. And it's hard to get them all the same size for me, <laughs> but hopefully we'll be all right. See, it does look like ballerina's arms. I kind of like that. It's kind of cool. Kind of whimsical. Maria Thomas would tell stories about this, probably. <laughs> All right, so that is a Prima by Kimberly Wood. Now, I'm going to draw in one more, and I think I'm going to point it over this way, maybe. Maybe not that way. And take a slow, move this over. Stay out of the frame. And a nice, slow arrow. And the little 
ovaly thing on top. Well, anyway, that's okay. Maybe it's a baby. <laughs> and so I think I'm going to hang this fluck straight down like this. So it's kind of hanging away from the stem. Eh, well, it'll be fine. And then I'm going to put this one in right next to it. Might overlap it, we'll see. Like that, I think that's pretty good. And we'll just, oops, just do a skinny one there. And if I go ahead and put in my dots, that'll just disappear, won't it? See how nice that is? <laughs> Voila. It's almost as good as, uh, oh, of course, that tangle. One to cover up bloopers. Of course, I can't think of it right now. <laughs> keep wanting to, I keep wanting to say bloomin' onion, but that's not it. <laughs> don't ask me where that came from. I don't know. So on this one, I think I'm going to put these little, I'm going to treat these little leaves like this. Put a little um, triangle on the end. Looks kind of cool. I kind of like this too, and it goes with the rest of it really nicely. It's kind of Art Deco, all of it. It kind of reminds me. Maybe that's because of the bold black and the... Anyway, <laughs> I'm just rambling now. Don't expect anything good. All right. I'll put my little flower dillies in. Might not need two on these. Flower dealies, yeah. <laughs> I'm professional. Well, I'm not going to try to do that again because that'll just make it worse. So we're just going to do this. Like so. So I kind of like that one too. Now, I'm going to switch over here and do this, um, I can this, and I'm trying to figure out which direction I want to go, whether I want to start in the center like Molly did in that, in that last um, project pack, or if I want to go up this way. And I think I want to go up this way, so um, we'll see what happens. Now, this is fine with me that it's going past this and that some of my leaf is going to um, overlap or underlap in this case. And I'm just retracing this penciled line. And then put alternating little veins on each side. You definitely don't want them too close. Now, to overlap or not to overlap, that is the question. I uh, don't know yet, so we'll find out. I'm going to leave that option open for myself. Yeah, I did that right. <laughs> Gets... What, baby? Okay, no, you're good. Go ahead. You're such a man. Sounds just like a man. Still my baby, though. He'll always be my baby. 
That's my boy. All right. All right. So the next thing we want to do on this, um, most of you probably know this one. This is a classic. Um, yeah, that's probably close enough. Uh, the next thing we want to do is put this little bracket on the top, right? Just like you draw when you're bracketing something when you take notes. And just think of it like a little hat, like Molly says. And go back down and put a little cap on each one. You don't want it to touch. You want to leave it air. You'll see how that whole thing works. The more air you give it, the bigger the leaf will be. As I get down to the bottom, then I make them bigger and then small again. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. And I'm over here on the wrong side again, sorry. I really like the way that uh, Annika Gabrov Gabrovic um, 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 does this. She, she does it not the way I do, um, or even the way they do. She, she has this really cute little way of, of just sort of making this work. So we're going to see what happens with this. So now the last step is to put these little U shapes in between each of these. And you can even put one here if you like between each of these, which is why I said you want to leave plenty of room. Okay, and this one is going to be sort of behind. You know, if you don't have much space, then make them small. If you do have space, then make them larger. Oops. Oh, we got another siren. Yeah. Well, I went over here, so I guess I'll be going over here, over here, won't I? All right. Whoops. I know, kids. It's all right. They're gone. Shh. And another one here. And another one here. And I think I got them all. Okay, now we are just going to um, put some sort of raggedy little edges. You can make them. This is the tangle for us who shake uh, because it really doesn't matter what you do. Now, uh, mollies tend to be a little bit looser and loopier. Uh, mine tend to, I like this to remind me of dandelion weeds. And um, so that's what it kind of reminds me of. So I don't mind the shaking and all of that. And when we get finished, it's going to look really cool. Well, I guess we're not done shaking for sure. Okay, so you're just going to link the tip of the U with a squiggly line to the to the point of the next cap, right? And then point of the cap to the next U, right? And then the next U, and you can go whichever way you want, whatever makes sense to you, whatever your pen feels. This does not have to be uh, even intuitive. You can just let your hand wiggle and let it do what it wants. And as long as you start and end in the right place, you'll be fine, okay? Okay, did you hear? I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. I struggled with this pattern the first time, first several times I tried to draw it. I couldn't quite get, I didn't quite get the little U and what was going on with that whole thing. That was when I was still trying to figure them out from the step outs instead of 
watching videos, which we didn't have that many back when I started. So, yeah. So I'm just sort of making them like lettuce leaves, yeah, or romaine or something. Just sort of kind of weird. All right, you should look up Zenlinia and see how she does hers. I, I think that's really cool. And I might try that out. But I'll have to go at it a different way, I think, so. So this is not hard at all, right? There we go. See? And then coming back out here. And it all just works together. Like so, isn't that fun? Now I like this with a lot more little veins than we put in. So I like to add some, but of course you do not have to, but I am going to. Depending on how I think it looks, I might come in here and make a whole bunch of small ones. We'll just see. Now that I have my handy 005, you know, I'm feeling kind of frisky. <laughs> and somebody left a comment saying there was a 003. Is that right? With a teeny tiny, teeny tiny little nib. Which is kind of cool. I'll have to look into that. I'm not sure I could take it, though. I like ink that flows, and I get frustrated when I have to go over something more than once. But <laughs> that's, actually, that's actually vital for me, so yay. Here, just like that. And again, add them, don't add them, whatever you like. I like that. Now, what do I want to do? Oh, there's one more step on this. And that is to add some line weight to some of these little dips, right? Sort of like a little shadow. You don't have to add it everywhere, or if you want to, you can. It definitely gives it a little bit more dimension, which is very cool. I like it. If you want to put some in and you don't have the zig or the zag that you want, just put one in. Just, you know, make it deeper than, than it was and voila, you've got it. Now Molly has a way, Molly Holaba, that did the Project Pack video for Icanthus. Um, she uh, does a little... U, when she does her U, then she makes it into a V and inks it in, uh, sort of like this, right? But you, you, I, I found that more difficult as I was getting out of control with my ink, uh, because of the shaking. So, you know, do it, don't do it, do what is best for you. What I found in trying to adapt to my shaking is that it really doesn't matter how you go about it as long as you you feel like you're getting a good result from it, right? So if, like I was telling you guys in one of the earlier videos, that the conventional wisdom when you draw is to pull towards you, right? But um, for me, sometimes pushing out gives me more control over the pen. And so it really just depends on the day, how I'm shaking, and all of that. So that's why I'm, what I mean when I say do find, find the way that works best for you and whatever your situation. Because I know I have 
people that are old, people that also have diseases that make them shake, um, people that shake just because they're old. And that may be my thing. We're going to go to the neurologist next week. But um, um, this is all to the good. Now, look at this on this side. Doesn't that look awesome? Just that little bit of rounding in there makes it so much more dynamic and interesting, I think. Anyway, so going to the neurologist next week because, yeah, the last time I fell, I cracked my head open. That was not pretty. So not to mention that I'm having to get an MRI of my lower back because I have not bounced back from that fall yet. So anyway, we're trying to get get a handle on everything, but gosh, it's just one appointment after the other, and my poor Tori, she's so sweet about it, but I mean, I have one or two every week, I mean, <laughs> she's got to be sick of it by now, I love that child, she's so wonderful to me, she has such a good heart, it, it makes me, it gives me hope for the future, that she's so good-hearted, that we still have people in this world that, that have beautiful hearts that, that are full of love and forgiveness and, and, and just, you know, all of the good things that we want in people. And we really need to focus on that instead of focusing on what is different about us. Focus on the hearts of people, no matter where they are, what they live, where they live, what their belief systems are, it doesn't matter. We're all God's children. And if you don't believe in God, then I'm not hurting you any with that, right? <laughs> That's what I always figured, you know? Believe in God, don't believe in God. In the end, it'll be, you know, up to you and Him. And that's not my business. I am trying to learn to take my days as they come, not have, just like with the art, not have preconceived notions about the way things are going to go, because so frequently that is the source of stress for people, is having a preconceived notion about the way things are supposed to be, and when that is that notion is not fulfilled, it can make us very frustrated, very stressed, very angry, you know. And so it's so important to sort of let that stuff go, you know. Don't sweat the small stuff like my Sean used to say. God bless that boy. I miss him so much. I sure could use him these days. But I think in the end, having me and Mari's life was probably for the best for him. I don't know. I just, I don't want to be in charge of this stuff, you know. I want people to love their kids, take care of them, be who they need to be for those kids. Kids should always come first. That's how I've always felt. And parents who refuse to put their kids above themselves, I just don't understand. I just don't understand that. I couldn't do it. And I know that, that all of you feel the same way because you are tanglers and this is how we are. Tanglers have the biggest hearts. That's what I think. <clears throat> Excuse me. Isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? So now I think, oh, I didn't put in, eh, but I want to wait. Eh, but I'm not. So I don't want to overwhelm this like I did this. Because I have some cool stuff in here, but you can't tell because you're so busy trying to figure out what's going on in here, the eye doesn't know where to land, right? Does that make sense? And so um, I'm going to try to be a little bit more circumspect here. Not use as many uh, fills, maybe. <laughs> and I'm just going to put another line of uh, I can this over here. It'll be a short one. Overlap or, you know. You know. <laughs> Help me. Help me. It's a bad day when I can't string a sentence together because you know me and my chatting. So I hear you, Zenders. 
I have heard what you've said in chat about you like things the way they are. And so I will not change it. You have also uh, given me some good ideas for shorter formats. Uh, I have been thinking about doing pattern videos in short form. I just don't know um, and seeing how that is. Um, it's a different kind of video and I would have to, I don't know. So I'm, I'm considering sh uh, doing some shorter form things in addition to what we do here, but I won't stop um, doing what my Zenders love. So don't you worry, Zenders. We're good. I know, I know exactly who I make these videos for, and that is a big thing in success in YouTube. I make them for you, Zenders. And even though there are those that, that, you know, check in and watch five minutes and then leave to see what I'm going to do, that's fine. But it's those of you that want to sit and draw with me and chit chat and sort of, you know, get along this way. Though you are the ones that I make these for. You are the ones that, that need the, need the interaction. Maybe that's, that's it. And the, the honest truth is I need that too. And so I really do see it as less teaching and more tangling with friends, right? Um, you know, if I have some knowledge that, that helps, you know, get us over something, then, then I am happy to share it. But, but uh, for me, the, the main thing is just hanging out with you guys. And I love that. I love hanging out with you. And so I don't want to get too wrapped up in, in um, what's going on with YouTube because I, I've pretty much figured, it, figured out what my issue was. And the fact that I have competition now that I didn't have then is fine. It's absolutely fine with me. I'm fine with competition. Because that's not what this is. And to be honest, I'm really the only one that does it, you know, in long form. So, um, and that's, that's fine too. You know, you're, you're, you guys are getting what you need in all different formats. And so that's what's important to me, right? It's, it's even though uh, earning money is part of it, that's not my main focus is, is um, to really share this art form with people. And that's what I really love about it. So. so there, you are loved, my Zenders. You will always come first. You will, I will always make my videos for you. Because I know where the love comes from. <laughs> All right, I'm going to hide my little cap over here. I really like this tangle, even though it's it can be uh, challenging for some. I really like it uh, because you really can't mess it up really too badly, right? <laughs> even when I don't get my use in, I manage. And doesn't this look like a dandelion leaf or maybe romaine lettuce or something? I just think that's so fascinating. I'm ready to do some, I don't know, I'm ready to branch out. I don't know what we've got coming up, but I'm about to take a look and see how that all goes. Oh, that's cute. That is cute. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing until I'm satisfied, and then I'm going to stop. I don't know how that turned out, but eh, it'll be fine. All right. I'll take that as a yes. I like this. I like this so far. But I, I really don't want to go too far behind my flowers because that's where I lost uh, my mind before. So I'm going to put an offshoot 
right here and just do a couple short ones. And can't even fit the tops in, that's okay. And and see, it's easy to get lost when you get all these edges going. It's easy to get lost in there. And right here. Or something like that, right? Okay. And right here. And I could ink those spots. I might think about that. So well, that's kind of cool. Okay. Pretty good. Oh, I didn't add my extra stuff in. Just for a little extra texture. A little extra dimension. Oops. Maybe not that much dimension, huh? I really do like this, just in black and white. So... I think I want to stop here and do the shading. Um, I can always add on later, but I really don't think I'm going to. I've got some overlap going on here, so I'm I'm happy about that. I didn't over overlap my busy sections, and so that's probably for the best. And you don't have to put all four of these zinger or fescue. Mm -hmm. I want them to be zingers. Speaking of zingers, I could put a few zingers in here and that might be fun. I could also put some of those uh, little um, dark buster thingies. Those were kind of cool. I think I'm going to make these kind of short out here. Remember to follow your creativity. If you want to try something, go for it. It's because I don't do it. Doesn't you guys nine times out of ten are so much better than what I come up with. So don't don't be don't be contained by what I do. Do your own thing. Just draw with me, right? Just hang out. I love the hanging. Out, that is. Alright. So not bad. Not bad. Okay, shading. This will be fun and easy to shade, I think. Hopefully I won't make too big of a mess, but no, no promises. So, of course, I'm going to put graphite where this stipple is. The stippling can be a challenge for those of us um, trimmer impaired, <laughs> or is that smooth impaired? I don't. I I don't know. It's too much thinking for me. So and a little bit here, I think, and then I don't know. I think I'll start with one side, but I may end up just spreading it into the middle. We'll just see how the one side thing goes. Last time I did it, I felt like I felt like the other side looked lonely. So <laughs> I realized that that may be a personal issue on my part. Hi to all you granddaughters out there who are tangling with your grandmothers. Good for you. Grandmothers need some love and attention. And it is always nice when you guys hang out and draw. 
I wish I had some some wonderful granddaughter that wanted to come over and draw with me all the time, but I don't. I just have little boys, and they are moving too fast to draw. What they really like to do is just play with my easel by, by taking all the stuff off and pushing it around and around. <laughs> That's what they really like. But you guys with, with granddaughters, you just enjoy the, the beauty of that whole situation. And you granddaughters, good for you for being, for being wonderful grandchildren. Us old ladies, we need the love. And if you're a gentleman, I'm good with that too. You need the love too. That's what those grandbabies are for. Hugging and just loving. They're so sweet. So Tori's little Selly, Marcel, was was uh, sick today. He was running a slight fever, and I had to go to the doctor, and they, they took me, and he fell asleep in the car. And they're so pitiful when, they're, when they feel that bad. Bless their little hearts. And, okay, what am I forgetting? Oh, this one. Yeah, I, I guess I've forgotten the one side thing, and we're just going for the center. And that's okay. And I need to add some more little veins on this baby right here. And let's just stick those in real quick before we... Okay. Now let's blend this out. See where we're at. See where we need to go. See what's up. See what's happening. All right. Okay, I'll go for the middle. Not bad. I like that. There's a beauty in a simplicity to the simplicity of just straight black and white tangling. And I love I love black and white abstract art. I I find it quite pleasing um, but not everybody feels that way and and a lot of people feel like they have to draw s a, something a cat a dog a, a door you know whatever it is a cube and that's and that's okay it's it's cool to do that just you know for for those of us with with blocks of uh, of creativity blocks. The Zentangle method is a great way to get around those. It's a great way to prove to yourself that you can be a pen and ink artist without having to draw your cats because your your eyes are, are always in the wrong spot or whatever it is. And that was a biggie for me. When I stopped having to draw certain things, then I relaxed and went, oh, well, it doesn't matter what it looks like, right? I can make it whatever. That was freeing. Uh, simplicity of limit is that the elegance of limitations? I think they call that with strings and and you know where you get your tangles from and such. So it's interesting. All right, very pretty. My stomach is growling. It must be dinner time. Since it's eight thirty at night, <laughs> we'll get there. All right, I do like this. It is interesting. I just really want to put a fill in it like I did the last time, and I know that's not going to work. So um, I'm not sure where I'm going to go from here. I'm I'm really not. I hope you guys have enjoyed um, sort of messing with this and seeing how you want to handle it. Um, I, I honestly don't know where I'm going to take mine to from here, but you guys have been here this far with me and it's going to turn out great. I can't wait to see in Facebook group, uh, how you guys are drawing these and get some more ideas from you, which happens frequently when I go in there or on Instagram. So, yeah, so I don't hate this. I don't hate this. I think I think what it needs is more line work. And I think like on these places where they overlap, I'm going to take my P in and do a little um, just reinforcing of the lines so that it's clear, you know, 
what the deal is. Um, other than that, I will add some more shading like here where these patterns overlap. And I may ink in black in some of these interstices, but if I do that, then I'm gonna run into problems with my designs, right? So again, uh, there's good and bad um, things to, pros and cons to each kind of addition that you might make. And I know that you guys are going to make something fabulous out of this. So uh, I am going to see you guys not tomorrow, but the next day, and uh, then we will get caught up. All right, guys, thank you so much for this journey together. Thank you for drawing with me. Thank you for being uh, so supportive, and I'm going to see you tomorrow. Not tomorrow. <laughs> the next day. Bye.